Hey, I'm Ted. Welcome to another Schoolie Conversion video. And today we're going to walk through the process of putting Henry's Durabright on the roof. So buses are notoriously kind of like tin cans and they uh, tend to be whatever the temperature is outside, you know, whatever degree. So if you got the heat baking on it, it's going to be pretty hot. And uh, so put the Durabrite on top to help reflect the sunlight off it and try to keep everything cool. Uh, I suppose to some degree it also kind of gives you another protection uh, against weather. I'm not sure how much I think you get to have a solid roof to begin with, but uh, that's sort of the motivation behind uh, putting it up there. So uh, I got uh, the Durabrite and then there's always a bunch of people that go with the, with the Tropicool. And uh, I just heard you know, basically conversations with people and reading online that people tend to stay away from silicone, you know, pure silicone based uh, products in a lot of places because it's hard to get anything to stick to it later on. It's a really difficult process to sort of get it off if you ever need to get things off. So I uh, went with the Durbright, which is the acrylic, and I guess that's the, the, the choice that I made. So for prep, the directions say to pressure wash everything, get everything nice and clean. And of course, it's uh, you know made more for like a roof sealant, not necessarily for buses. So it doesn't go into details about how to prep your bus roof. Uh, I decided actually to sand my roof down. It was pretty dirty up there, and I suppose I could have scrubbed it down. And in hindsight, I probably could have scrubbed it with like a Scotch Bright pad, like this, and. Um, so I'm simply green, which I've used as a sort of a degreaser detergent for many parts of the bus, and I still have a little bit of that kicking around. So I probably could have gone with that as well, but I decided to probably be really might as well just sand it down, get it as best as I could. It only took me a couple hours. Um, I just used some 80 grit and kind of went through and kind of tried to get uh, until it was as clean as possible. Uh, there was no grit, no grime, and and you know weird things that were sort of stuck on there. I don't know who knows what it was. Uh, so I sanded it all down with 80 grit. And then I hosed it down and then uh, did kind of go through my Scotch Bright pads, some Simply Green, cleaned that all up, um, got all the, the dust off it, and then hosed it down again. Then it came out uh, this morning and um, put, uh, used a mixer to mix up that five gallon paint. Um, I had never, I've seen them before and I borrowed them a couple times when I was doing drywall, but uh, getting one of those drill mixers was really, really keyed, I think, to mix up this uh, five gallon pail I have. and. I think I'm going to do a lot more epoxy in the future, so that's going to be really handy to mix up that epoxy. So I'm, I'm glad I got that. And uh, so mixed up the mixed up the uh, Durabrite, and then it tells you to put it into uh, put your coats in in different directions. So uh, it was about almost 70 degrees this morning when I started, and uh, it took me about 40 minutes to do the uh, to roll the entire roof. I just used a high nap um, roller on a broom handle. And I went across the bus, which is actually not that complicated. Um, it actually, it got 70 degrees. It took about 45 minutes for that coat to dry. And then, and they say that you want to try to put them on, uh, put the coats in the same day because they can adhere better to them. So put the first coat on crossways, and I put the second coat on the long ways, which is a little bit tricky actually trying to get down to the side and, and uh, put, the, uh, put that coat on without falling off the side of the roof. So be careful up there. And also a tip, side note, I was talking with uh, one of the bus mechanics at the school where I work and uh, we were talking about the roof and he said, you know, try as much as you can to walk directly on the, on the rivets where it goes into the ribs because if you step in the middle it flexes the, the, the sheet metal a little bit and sort of tends to pop and bend up the rivets and opens up gaps in the seam. So, uh, and, you know, it's impossible not to step there every once in a while, especially when you're trying to paint, but as much as you can try to step on directly on the ribs. So I thought that was a pretty good tip. Uh, so again, 45 minute uh, wait time to dry. I went and put the second coat on, um, going the long way. Uh, again, that took about 45 minutes to dry. And then I only used for the bus, uh, and again, my bus is a full size class C, you know, probably 35 feet from beginning to end. And it took, uh, I still had over half of uh, the five gallon pail after two coats. So I thought, why not? Might as well go up and do a third coat. Can't hurt anything. So I put actually three coats up on there and I still got a little bit less than half of this pail. So, um, oh, actually, I'd masked off. Uh, you can probably see up on the bus, maybe there, masking tape down the sides to try to get an edge. And then when I paint it, I'll put the masking tape up on the, on the uh, Durabrite and then get my line there. I'm not really a painter or an artist, so I don't know how that's going to look out. But. 
Uh, so it's drying now, and uh, I don't know, I guess I'll give you a post uh, update later on. We'll do some scientific experiments to figure out if it actually makes it cooler or not. But um, again, one of those projects that was kind of winding down uh, season-wise, so it's going to start getting pretty cool here in, uh, in the Northeast, and I wanted to get that project done. So uh, again, thanks for watching, thanks for following along, and uh, with the progress on the bus, certainly appreciate it. Like, subscribe, do all those things you do, and until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.